the hydrogen atom is the only atom that we have that we have equations that can explicitly show the energy of the electron in the atom. And that's because the hydrogen atom only consists of two particles, an electron and a nucleus. Once we add another electron in there, it's too complicated for us to write an equation for. So the Rydberg equation gives us the energy of the electron and the hydrogen atom. So the original form of it gives the um, energy based on a quantum number, and that's our principal energy level of the electron in the atom. Uh, once we have other electrons in there, we need additional information to identify the energy of the electron. So E is minus 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules times 1 over n squared. So this is our energy representation. So energy goes up here. And the top of it is where we rip the electron off the atom. And that is defined as our zero energy point. So energy in any of these levels in the atom is going to be a negative value. So the lowest energy level, n equals 1, is minus 2.18 times 10 to minus 18 joules. When we look at the atom, look how it behaves, we can excite gases with electrons that will knock our electron in the atom to higher levels and then they fall back down. And they give off this line spectrum. So they give off a light in a very narrow energy range. And um, so what we're doing is we're seeing the difference of the energy between two levels. So this is the form that we actually get to measure in the atom, the difference between the levels. And uh, this is an emission spectrum. And we generally start off with a small number of lines. And as we go up to higher levels, higher elements, we get more and more lines in the visible spectrum. Uh, we also can have an absorption spectrum. Um, my printer's a little bit going there. So an absorption spectrum, we can excite the atom, let it emit light, or we can shine light through it and watch the light being absorbed. And they're the same frequencies. So we can knock an electron up, that will be absorbing light, and it'll fall back down and that'll emit light. And it's the same energy either way. So in the Rydberg equation for between two levels, we have two forms of it. So our change of energy is minus 2.18 times 10 to minus 18 joules times one over the times the term one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared. And then another form we use one over wavelength, which is proportional to energy. So one over wavelength is equal to the Rydberg constant times 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. And this term in the parenthesis is always between 0 and 1. So this is basically giving us the fraction of energy between the lowest and the highest ionization. And then for the wavelength version, we generally use either meters or nanometers for our units. So if we're using meters, uh, the constant 1.097 times 10 to the positive 7 inverse meters. And if we're going after nanometers, it's 1.097 times 10 to the minus 2 inverse nanometers. Uh, this circular representation is another way of showing this, but showing it around a nucleus. So the, the lowest circle is our n equals 1. We have multiple levels and the biggest gap is between level one or two and then it gets smaller and smaller for each and every successive step uh, with a hard limit of taking that electron completely off and when electrons fall down to the lowest level n equals one in the hydrogen atom the energy is up in the ultraviolet range when they fall down they land on level two that's in the visible range. And when they land on level three, we're in the infrared range. And all higher levels are going to be infrared or microwave. So 
So to do a, uh, one problem, uh, we're looking at the transition from n equals five down to n equals two. And we're gonna calculate energy, frequency, and uh, wavelength for this. So doing energy first, we take our equation, minus 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules, times the parenthesis, one of our final squares, so that's one over two squared, minus one over initial squared, so that's one over five squared. And I always like to do that term by itself first to make sure it's in that range between zero and one. In this case is 0.21. So I multiply it and I get uh, 4.58 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. And if we are not specifying the units, that is a valid answer. That is the energy of that transition. We often like to see this in kilojoules per mole. So we would be multiplying by one kilojoule over a thousand joules, then multiplying by Avogadro's constant, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and we end up with 276 kilojoules per mole. So we have a tendency that we like numbers without these uh, exponential terms on them. So to go after wavelength, I'll do wavelength next. And uh, since we often like to see this in nanometers, I will use the term for nanometers. So it's one over wavelength equals that 1.097 times 10 to minus two inverse nanometers times the term one over n final squared minus one over n initial squared. That term we already know is 0.21, I multiply them, I get one over lambda is 2.30 times 10 to the minus third inverse nanometers. So this is not the wavelength yet. We actually do one over that answer to get the wavelength. When I do that, the wavelength comes out to be 434 nanometers. To get the frequency, we can't get the frequency directly from the Rydberg equation. We can get it from either one of our answers. Uh, so I can do a speed of light over our wavelength or energy over Planck's constant. And they're based on the equations up here. And if I do speed of light over wavelength, I would have to convert my wavelength into meters. So since I don't have to convert this answer yet, uh, so that was a valid answer, that's a valid answer. Uh, I'm gonna use the energy here. So I'll take the energy of the single photon, 4.58 times to the minus 19 joules, divided by Planck's constant, 6.626 times to the minus 34 joule seconds. And the frequency comes out to be 6.91 times 10 to the positive 14 inverse seconds. And the inverse seconds we also uh, can call hertz.